So hello everyone and thanks for being with us on the first stage of our projects by modeling and using simple and basic techniques. We will start with 3D Max by having an ellipse first and we just need to figure the dimension which will suit exactly on the scale of our project. And this is our first thing we need to do to fix the right sizes. And we have our first object within a scene, the first ellipse. There is a second one and the third I just draw a simple composition by spraying around some random objects, in my case ellipse. And the second thing which I need to do is to connect the each ellipse to the others by using simple uh, circles which will form our joint between the ellipse. I just put randomly and pretty close to the connection points of the ellipse to each other, how I said, and by copying all of them around, I got the basic shapes of my object composition, which will form my uh, future buildings, which I'm gonna start with. And that's the whole combination of the geometrical figures words I need to have in my scene. After that I choose all of them and connect it in one object. I actually convert all the separate things in one and convert the whole structure in editable spline. After that I need to trim the lines I actually don't need and after this I go to the simple vertex and well all of them I mean the closest two by two vertexes to each other to have nice and clean configuration of all the lines so the idea is just because when uh, once when we convert it to edible poly we need to have a um, uh, nice and clean closed object which will basically form our first object on our scene which we will create after all the rest what we need in our building after how I said the things that the glassing itself you will see just in a second and all the rest structures the framing and the floor slabs as well So I put the editable poly modificator and see what we get finally from our first exercise. There is the first object what we need to start with our further steps in modeling and to bring shell modificator above and editable poly again. So I have with the shell nice thickness of the object and with editable poly I got the possibility to work on it further and to reshape or change something which I don't like or in my case for example I just uh, choose the upper and mm, the polygons 
from the bottom side and by inverting them I got some nice distance inside which I will use for uh, my further glazing facade so let's do this again shell I use for thickness and by putting editable poly actually the things by using all the modificators will allow us always to step back in our workflow and to change something which we uh, will not fix and fit our needs and the object so once when we invert the polygons inside and put some nice distance like what, what I'm doing now and by confirm you see we have already a slightly smooth nice border inside of the object so the next thing to do is just I need to pick the lines and this you can do by double clicking you to select automatically the lines you actually need and from them you can create a separate line which will automatically detach or make uh, a copy from the inner line and by using extrude modificator you can see how I'm doing this and uh, the size of the second object start to grow and actually this will be our glassing also from this I can have actually have the glass I need to put some thickness inside and let's make a copy from our first floor to the upper uh, next five further and make them instance I just decided to put my first camera to see how it will look from the composition we will start building in our scene. I put some simple plane and again let's see through the camera what we will see in the future in our scene. I think till now we got some nice uh, building structure with couple floors glass facade uh, the floor slabs will be covered by some steel or aluminium covering and the rest it will be glass and also the framing these are the major objects we need to model on our first stage of the project so the next things I need to do is to bring some chamfer on the edges of our slabs because in reality we don't have so uh, sharp edges of the objects and I picked the f some random slab and let's see what we can do with it make an isolation by, by pressing Alt and Q and select the edges by double click actually the newest version of 3D Max allows 
by double clicking to select all the uh, lines standing close to each other and that really helps when we enrush in our workflow so bring the chamfer, choose the chamfer and uh, select so much edges we need to create in our object but bear in mind that if you put some more numbers always the object become pretty heavy and as that, that's all we reflect to our further render stages and our render time will slow down so that's it actually with the chamfer and our first composition in a scene the same now I'm gonna proceed with the glazing and from the object there I'm gonna extrude but first I need to bring some thickness with the shell and after that I choose editable poly or I can use the same one and by copy and pasting it over so I select now the vertical lines from the object which I'm gonna use for my framing and by ticking on the visible render elements you see our lines what we created right now start to grow and now we have nice thickness and our framing start to become visible So the next thing is and the last in our first stage it will be to bring some nice material on the object what we create till now. And first let's start with the simple V-ray material. And in this project I'm not going so much further for creating some plain material or complicated material material and just stay with a simple and basic adjustment on the material just to have a nice preview of how all the things are working together so this is my V-Ray material in my sled mode V-Ray material editor and that will be the glass I need the reflection and the refraction to have completely white or a little bit near to the white and let's bring it over to the object now it's time for creating the material of the framing we need to bring some metal steel effect by having a reflection and reflection glossiness using the file of map from the standard material and let's play a little bit with the fresno until you get a nice reflection combination between the masks and the follow follow so i think for our needs that will be completely enough and let's bring it over to the material and that's it we are almost done with our first stage and let's go to the next steps further and thanks for watching let's see you next in the next videos thanks